Okay, my name is Lige Curry, bass player from Parliament Funkadelic. I've been playing bass uh, with George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic since 1979. And I've been knowing George since 1974. So, uh, I've been doing this thing. I've learned a lot from different bass players. Bass players have a history here with funk. Um, we got Billy Bass Nelson, uh, Boogie Monson, we got Bootsy Collins, we got Rodney Ski Curtis, we got me. Then we have some other offshoot people like Ch uh, Jeff Cherokee Bunn, and Star Colors, different bass players. But I'm in there somewhere, and I'm here now, present now. <laughs> and we're on a major tour. Uh, 2015, George launched a tour where we just released a new Funkadelic record called uh, First You Gotta Shake the Gate, and you can buy it on Amazon, anywhere like that, in your online stores or whatever. And uh, we've been going around America and the world pushing it. We just got back from Japan, Australia, UK. We got a lot more of that to do, so. Catch us when we're in your town. You know, be looking out for us. Uh, we bound to be bopping. And uh, you know, P Funk is forever. You know, some people ask me like, how you, you know, you've been playing with George for a long time. How, how did you manage that or whatever? But you know, I was just you know talking to some people earlier, like about a week ago. Some fans asked me that, and I was telling them about it. the rappers that do it now. Uh, the DNA that funk has, it's kind of been installed in the rap world. And funk is kind of like the beat and the motivation behind a lot of the great rappers from Public Enemy to Digital Underground, and, uh, all the way up into, what's the new guy, Kenwood Denard, was it? What's his name? I don't get his name. Ken, Ken, Kenwood or something? <laughs> Either way, you know, there's so many rappers now, I can't keep up with them, you know. Uh, I mean, I love, I love hip-hop. When it came in, I remember Run DMC coming out with It's Like That and That's The Way It Is. And I knew then, back in like 80-something, it was going to be a new thing. And, you know, they opened up for P-Funk at the Capitol Center in Washington, D.C., so. At that time, I knew it was going to be bad. Now it's like a phenomenal. Everybody uses hip hop in some form or, or fashion, some kind of way. So. But keep pushing that funk because if you don't have a little funk in there, then it ain't going to have that groove. If that groove ain't there, then you ain't going to dance. So you want to keep that groove to make it funky, regardless of what you're doing. So you can keep, you know, like George said, you know, put a hump on your back, shake your psyche, you know, get up for the downstroke. stroke. All that's like dance music type of stuff. And flashlight, knee deep, you know. If you come to the show still from the time George started in 58, which I was only like years old, uh, you know, he's still keeping it like a party. And uh, the whole show is like upbeat, upbeat. He's 74, 73, something like that. And he's still kicking butt. So my hat's off to him. When I get that age, I want to be able to do the same things. You know, when you keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to work. So hopefully Funk will live on, you know, with that type of attitude and some of us are still going, uh, even after the fact. You know, we want to keep pushing it because it is a very important part of our American history, especially the music part for our black people. You know, funk was one of the things that started way back. Uh, it has jazz influence, it has blues influence, and most of all it has gospel influence. Because Most of us that came through this group, we started out playing in church. So uh, a lot of that, I know for me, my mom and dad always wanted me to attend churches and do as many services as I could. And me and my cousin, Michael Hampton, who also plays guitar, you know, part of the funk club too. So, a lot of funk history here, you know. And, uh, I don't know, 30 some years is a long time, but my parents told me, if you get a good job, keep it. 
<laughs> you right about that. <laughs> well, that's how, you know, my dad was, uh, he worked at General Motors you know, for like 40 years. And I watched him you know, work hard, and my mom had a job. She worked at the department store and different things. So they both kept that thing going, you know, so we could, you know, I had like five brothers and one, one sister. So a lot of miles of feed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, just, we did what they could do, and I learned a lot from just them being, they're all my, they are my heroes, you know. Right. And I, I just look at everything that they sacrificed so I can be doing what I'm doing. You know, I love my mother to this day because she, she always was supportive, you know, and said, do what you love to do. If you can do it, you know, um, do it and be happy. But whatever you do, be happy. But, she always gets on me because like my brothers, they have these nine to fives and I'm doing this, you know. <laughs> Which ain't really a nine to five, but it's like all the time. So I never really punch out or punch in, you know. But you but we, know what you do. <laughs> we, have, we have off days. Like I'm looking forward to like uh, after the eighth of next month, I'll be able to have like maybe a month off. Oh, that's cool. I'm, you know, really looking forward to you know, having some time. To just, I'm doing a record right now with a guy from Berlin, Germany. Now I have time to go home and start, uh, well, finish up on what I started with him. And, uh, so you have to use your off time the best way you can. Right. <laughs> it is a trip, but I love what I do. Hey, that's key. Okay. <laughs>